Okay, well hello again guys, hope you're all well. Today what we're going to cover is uh, getting Secure Boot on Arch Linux working and configuring Secure Boot Key Manager to automatically sign our kernel and bootloader whenever they get updated. This method does use systemd boot, but it should also work if you boot directly from the unified kernel image if you create one. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to enable Secure Boot and put it into setup mode. So let's reboot into our firmware setup page, sometimes it's called a BIOS setup page. So, systemctl, reboot, dash dash, firmware, dash setup. Now, all computers vary slightly on how to enable secure boot and how to put it into setup mode, so I recommend giving the manual a quick read. In the case of this virtual machine, I know it's in the device manager, secure boot, and I just need to reset the secure boot keys. And that will put it into setup mode. And then I can continue. Okay, now that we're back in Arch Linux, let's uh, set up uh, Secure Boot Key Manager. It's a great bit of software from Fox Warren. It really makes uh, Secure Boot a breeze. It's also got Pac-Man hooks, so it'll automatically re-sign our files when they get updated. It's a really good bit of software. Easy to use as well. So, so we do Pac-Man dash S Y S B T D L. There you go, it's installed already. Nice, nice and lightweight. Now the next few commands, we need to have root privileges. So let's come root. And let's make sure that we are actually in setup mode for secure boot. And we are, as you can see, it says under here, secure boot. We can see it's enabled. And that's exactly what we want to see, okay? So let's create ourselves some secure boot keys. These are our personal keys. SBCTL space create hyphen keys. Okay, those keys are created now. Let's enroll them into the uh, firmware. We're also gonna add the Microsoft keys. Uh, some uh, hardware, uh, the firmware gets signed with the Microsoft keys, so it's good to have this just in case. Okay, that's done. Now what we need to do is we need to sign uh, our boot files. Okay, so I'm, what we're gonna do is sign the secure boot uh, EFI. And we're also going to sign our unified kernel image. If you're using uh, just a normal kernel image, we can sign that as well. So let's uh, sign the bootloader first. So SBCTL dash S to save it. This will add it to a list. So if it ever gets updated, it will get re signed when the Pac Man hooks run. I'm going to add dash O to change the output. So we're going to make our output uh, the same file name with dot signed at the end. This tells systemd boot to use this file first. Okay. Okay, so that's that file signed. Next thing we're going to need to do is we need to sign our kernel or our kernel image. Uh, if you're not sure where that is, you can cut out the uh, make init TPIO script preset. And you can see on mine, I'm using unified kernel images and it's getting output to here EFI, EFI, Linux, arch linux.efi. If you're just using a more vanilla setup, this is this file will be the one we need to sign, which is the uh, boot VM Linux dash Linux. Okay. So same game, sbctl, line, that's s to save it, and then give it the name. Okay, that's signed. Now let's reinstall our bootloader. Okay, and let's make sure if all those files that have been signed properly by running sbctl, verify. And as you see, all those files have been signed with, with our personal keys, which we generated. So let's reboot and see if it worked. Okay. 
Okay, well, it rebooted, so that's always a good sign. Let's just double check that uh, Secure Boot is activated. And you can see this. So, SBCDL is installed. Setup modes now have been automatically disabled because we've enrolled our keys and Secure Boot's enabled. Last thing to check is just to double check. And then an update to the kernel. That SBCTL automatically re-signed it. So we'll reinstall our kernel. There you go. As you can see in my case, it regenerated the unified kernel image. And right at the end, it signed the file. And the, the, the bootloader didn't change, so it didn't need to sign that again. Okay, hey guys, so there you go. Uh, the last thing you probably want to do is put a password on your firmware setup page. No point going through all this just to leave the front door unlocked. So I hope that helps. Thank you. See you in the next one.